Despite three and six last year, Mike Norvell has energized uh, the Florida State fan base in a number of ways. And one in particular has been the recruiting prowess uh, that has been shown for 2022, especially and going forward beyond that. We got uh, Nate Greer on the line from Noel Game Day to help us out with all of that. Nate, how are we doing today? I'm good. How about you? Thanks for having me on again. I appreciate it. So, you know, going into to the weekend, they had well over 100 kids that at that point said they were going to attend the spring game. And realistically, they probably had about 80 to 85, which is still a really great turnout for a game you know, for, without being able to do anything that's visit related. So they actually just went to watch a football game. But the big thing was um, – the weekend was kind of led by um, two current commitments for Florida State, uh, five-star Travis Hunter and four-star quarterback Nico Marchio. They were really the guys that were the driving force behind um, getting a lot of these kids to come to visit and also kind of being the quasi-host, you know, filling in the role that the coaches may traditionally fill when it comes to walking around campus, meeting up with other recruits. Um, they really did a great job of um, – being the the mayor, so to speak, uh, of their class and of uh, filling in for the coaches. So they did a really great job uh, making these kids feel welcome. Um, they spent a lot of time outside the Moore Center um, welcoming recruits and the families, talking with fans. So those two guys did a bit for their staff. But you look at the, the biggest, I guess, negative is – you know, Julian Armella didn't come, a legacy recruit, uh, offensive lineman that Florida State's been after, and a lot of the fans really want Florida State to land. You know, he didn't make it up. And, and that puts a little damper on it. And, you know, Quincy McAdoo was supposed to come with his mom. He didn't come, ends up decommitting yesterday. Um, you know, there are a couple of guys who did not show up that they expected or wanted to come, but the, the end result was – a really, really great time with five stars. They had over over 50 considered blue chip recruits there, which is probably the best collection of talent Florida State's had since you know, Jimbo's run. So, Nate, when you yeah. look at uh, Quincy McAdoo's uh, situation, sorry yeah. to cut you off. I think we've got a bit of That's a lag right. there. Yeah. But uh, when right. we look at uh, Quincy McAdoo's situation, uh, you had uh, pointed out to me before we started to record uh, some of the particulars there connected to him staying at home mm -hmm. and uh, Mike Norvell and his staff uh, losing who was primarily the first uh, recruit they went after. Yeah, he was one of their very first offers that they they put out there when they came over to, to Florida State. Even you know, looking at that 2020 class, they even still – made a point to reach out to him and give him an offer. So it's a guy that they were after for a while. Um, uh, his, his cousin, James Jointer, was being recruited. He committed to Arkansas a little bit, about six weeks ago or so. And if I, I wouldn't say clear, but clear that, you know, Matt McAdoo was probably going to make a decision to decommit class. Okay. Uh, it's not guaranteed he ends up at Arkansas. It's like a 98% chance. But it, it is a guy that Florida State was very heavily – Recruiting a guy they really like. When you look at this uh, wide receiver class in, in 2021, it's not – I'm sorry, 2022, excuse me. It's not a great class. So getting a guy who they looked at as a possible Tamari and Terry-like receiver to, to jump in in January, it, 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 it is a loss. So, um, you know, you look at what they possibly can bring in after that. You know, they're, they're still after Kevin Coleman, who's the number one receiver in the country. Um Caden Saunders is committed to Penn State. You have Greg Gaines out of Tampa. So you know, there's, there's still quite a few kids. And what we noticed with Norvell is when someone decommits, they have a plan. So it's not what we saw, unfortunately, with Taggart. You know, if someone decommitted, they didn't have a backup. So I'm quite sure the staff has a backup plan and was ahead of the game, knowing that this was probably coming down the line. Good player. You know, it hurt, hurts your class a little bit. But, you know, good luck to the kid wanting to stay home. Got Nate Greer on the line from Noel Game Day. Setting us straight on the recruiting uh, situation there at Florida State following a big uh, spring game oriented weekend uh, this past weekend and what uh, the targets look like going forward. Uh, please get your uh, free mask, uh, Florida State or 
one of 35 teams there at voiceofcollegefootball.com. Even if you don't want a mask, check us out at voiceofcollegefootball.com and what we're building there. Rodney Hill's the 45th rated athlete in the country. You mentioned him. He's out of Georgia. What, uh, what can you tell us about him? The thing with, with him is he brings a lot of versatility to the team. He can, he's really good out of the backfield catching the ball. But for you know, he's about six foot, one eighty, um, very much like Lawrence to Lawrence to Philly that Florida State has right now. Um, but he's a, probably a little bit more of a violent runner. Uh, for a guy who needs to add about fifteen pounds, he runs really well behind his pads. But the thing that is exciting about him is that he's really good in the open field, and you know the way that Norvell likes to use his running backs all over the field, and the way he likes to rotate. Uh, you look at, at a guy like Antonio Gibson who plays for the Redskins now. Kind of reminds me a little bit of him is that he can line up out wide be a receiver, but you know he he's a really good runner. Um, and, and again, like wide receiver, the running back class is not great this year. Uh, they identified a guy who was committed to Virginia, uh, put the press on him, and they were able to flip him. So uh, I think it's a really solid take as depth to – a room that needs it. And he's also a guy that's going to be a contributor. Uh, I really want to see how he develops this year. If they can be that 200 pounds, six foot back, he's going to be a, a really good player for Florida state. And he's hitting the ground running with, with recruiting. He's all about it. He's all about building that class up. So he's definitely in, in for it now. Talking Florida state but Seminoles for, recruiting with Nate Greer. Yeah, go ahead, Nate. No, I, I was going to say um, the thing with him is that he's, like you mentioned, he's from Georgia. Uh, you know, since Brian Barto came on, they really made a big push for Georgia recruits. And, you know, Florida State needed to get back into that Georgia, South Georgia area because there's a lot of really good ball players in that area. So they're making a big push for Georgia. And, you know, he's a guy who knows a lot of other kids plays on seven on seven with a lot of the other guys that they're targeting. So, you know, on that side of it, you know, Rodney Hill brings kind of that name that these other, other recruits may know. And, and that's important right now when you still can't take visits, you see your friends and teammates you know, buying into what Florida state is doing. So, uh, you know, off the field, it's a very good take for Florida state. Tracking Florida State recruiting with Nate Greer. You can catch him on Noel Game Day. Of course, uh, we've got a Florida State show with Logan Robinson every Wednesday night at uh, 6 mm -hmm. o'clock Eastern time, so lock it in on that. And obviously, get on over to yeah. Noel Game Day. These guys are insane covering Florida State football. So that's the place to be. That's all there is to it. Go to Noel Game Day and everything that they do there. Uh, hear the Spear podcast and uh, the mm -hmm. written work there at Noel Game Day. Yeah, check out the Discord. We've um, Dustin and I have been putting a lot of information in our Discord. Um, a lot of stuff that's gotten out there we put out there first. Um, so the Discord also, if you like to chat with you know Florida State fans and you know chop it up, talk. It's, it's not just football; it's basketball, it's baseball. You know, we've been out front with this uh, these changes with the team uh, before anyone else has had that information. So. So with a lot of schools uh, looking to open up and uh, you see every couple days where there are visitation weekends that are have been set up uh, in early June across the nation, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of schools looking forward again to opening up on June 1st and trying to make up for lost time. Uh, first of all, any weekend scheduled like that for Florida State, number two would be do you expect a flood of commits as most of us do, but maybe it's just because we figure, okay, they've been waiting and waiting and waiting to get the official visits and they're going to visit and then commit uh, may not necessarily uh, follow that path, but uh, what are you expecting over the next month or so? A couple months. So Florida state announced a camp um, up in Tallahassee. So I think that they'll get a lot of recruits up there for that. Um, I do expect you know, a guy like Kushan Sapp, who was talking about making a commitment here in May, pushed back his announcement now until he can take visits. You look at A.J. Duffy, another quarterback they're really pushing for, again, was going to make an early 
early May, late April decision and now has pushed that back, wanting to take visits, which I completely understand. And you, you can't knock these kids for wanting to take a visit. You look at 2021 class and, and those kids are going to a college you may not know. So, but when you look at Florida State, I expect a lot of kids to to visit. Uh, a lot of these kids that were there this weekend have already told us they're going to line up a visit as soon as possible. And I do expect a a run of commitments. Um, I, I well, we have heard a lot about two 2023 kids, uh, big time, big time kids that Florida State is after that possibly may have went ahead and did the the silent route this weekend. Uh, one of them is possibly going to make an early announcement uh, here within the next couple of weeks. Um, so you know, you're looking at a, a, at a top 15 player in the country and, and, and that, and that prospect. Um, I think that you have a couple linemen that Florida state is heavily after that are going to visit one more time before they make it public. And, you know, I, I do expect Florida state to gain a handful of guys um, over the summer once they can get that, one-on-one -on -one with, with these coaches. And, and that's all, what a lot of them have said, that they really like Florida State. They like what they saw this weekend. But they want to get that one-on-one -on -one time with the coaches to see what they're like in person. So I, I, I do think that Florida State is going to really push it this weekend, this this summer. And with the early signing day, you can take summer officials. So that's something that we're going to really get to see for the first time. Or, or guys take them officials. So Nate, with the uh, recent uh, track record coming off three and six, the losing seasons prior to that, Mike Norvell takes over. It doesn't look pretty on the field last year. Why mm -hmm. do you think he's been able to make these kind of strides? The, their staff is a little bit younger. Um, they do a good job of connecting with, with these players. Uh, and, and that's the big thing that they've really focused on, not really selling what's on the field so far. They're really selling the, the connection and what they, they – what they can do both on and off the field in terms of development. Each one of the coaches has success in the previous stops of developing guys for the NFL. And whether these kids realize it or not, not everyone's going to make the NFL, but that's still all their goal. And when you talk to these recruits, the biggest thing they say is that, you know, they make a one-on-one -on -one connection better than a lot of the staffs that are out there. So they really focus on trying to you know, show who they are as coaches and men first and foremost. And then with this weekend, um, a lot of these recruits were watching to see how, how whether it was a, a specific position group or how the team looked. And, you know, they felt that things did do look better. Um, it, it's kind of matching what the coaches are telling them. They're very, very transparent. Uh, you know, we had Nico on the uh, Hear the Spear podcast, uh, right before the visit. And one thing he talked about with Norvell is that, you know, he doesn't sugarcoat things. He tells you how it is. And, and that's one thing that when you, when you have a lot of these coaches will tell you what you want to hear. The staff is not going to tell you what you want to hear. Um, they like to break down film and evaluate kids on the phone. They like to give pointers. They like to spend time. So they've been able to connect first and foremost. And now they, if they can show it on the field, that's what's really going to put them over the next to the next level. So, um, and, and then getting a guy like Ryan Barto in, who is a, a hammer, getting a guy like Randy Shannon in to build up that that South Florida ties, uh, I, I think is a is a big move for Florida State. Always enjoy the conversation and the breakdown we get from Nate Greer. Wealth of uh, recruiting, uh, knowledge, insight, information across the board here. Uh, check them out on nolgameday.com. How do people lock in on the Discord? Uh, so if you want to come in, um, it, it, it's through Patreon. You, you sign up through there, and um, it, it, it's a very easy easy process. You can hit us up on Twitter and ask for a link. We'll send you a link, you know, nogameday.com or at nogameday on Twitter. You can go to our website. There's a link on the web website. So there's a lot of ways to get into it, but it's through Patreon and you just search no game day and, and follow the instructions. Very cool. 
Hey, we appreciate you stopping by as always. Uh, you have a great uh, rest of your day. I appreciate it. Go Knowles. <laughs>